And God has given us this new way to see, you know, can you still worship me? Will you still worship me? And our answer is, yes, we will worship. Amen. If you'll please stand as you're able. <laughs>
There is a saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I very, very clearly remember being nine or ten years old and going to my mom and saying, I'm bored. <laughs> I hear a lot of people giggling, and I bet some of you are giggling at home. Uh, to which my mother handed me a dust cloth <laughs> and said, don't be bored anymore. It's easy to get distracted frustrated in these times, especially for those of you who are um, sitting in front of a computer screen all day long doing classes online, and for the next two weeks, as you will be. It's tough. So God has given you something very special so that you don't need to be bored, and it's not a dust block. God has given you imagination and creativity. Find ways to think about others. Write a, write a note um, or draw a picture for your mom or dad or your siblings. Nice pictures. <laughs> Just to say thank you and I love you. There's always something that we can do for someone else that's fun. All you need to do is use your imagination. So my challenge to all of you today is to use your imagination and your creativity to find ways to say thank you and I love you to your family members. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that with this COVID, you have dusted off our imaginations and our creativity. And you have said, use them. I've given them to you. And we pray, Lord God, that you open our hearts and minds and souls so that we may find new creative ways of saying, I love you, to all of those around us. In Jesus' name. First scripture reading comes in Psalms 13. O oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you be overwhelmed? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn to me, O Lord and God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes, or I will die. Don't let them rejoice in my downfall. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing with the Lord because he is good to me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lay aside 
all those to-do lists, and let us pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray for Riri Bryant, for Kevin Stanley, Betty Bowen in the loss of her husband. Lee Dunn, Dolly Perez and her family as her sister is um, undergoing some very critical medical issues. Oh Lord God, we get up in the morning and we thank you that the sun rises, because it very well may be the only thing normal about our days. These days. And yet you look at us, your followers, your body of Christ, gathered here at Central United Methodist Church, and you say, for such a time as this, I have brought you here. I have called you to be my followers. So follow me. Follow me with your prayers. Your prayers for others. Follow me with your connecting with one another in new and creative ways. And so, Lord God, we place before you the names that we have hidden in our hearts, the names that have been read here, and the names that will yet come today to us. And we lay these persons at your feet, knowing that in your hand is healing, in your gaze, is healing, whether that healing is here or in your very presence. We don't know, but we do know that you are the great physician, and we praise you and thank you, God, for that. Lord, we pray above, beyond all things for an eradication of COVID. There might be a miraculous even though at the very thought of it, in our tiny little brains, we all say, oh, that, that will never happen. Imagine what if we know that God is big enough. Father, we place all who are suffering from the effects of illness, who are having surgeries. We especially pray for those who have lost loved ones who have come home to be with you. We praise you and glory that they are with you and in no more pain. But, O oh Lord, you know the sorrow and the hole in our hearts. But we also know that in time you will heal us as we look forward to you. Lord, we pray for our country and all countries and all leaders that they are looking at you for all of their decisions. Father, we pray for teachers and students, especially during these times, and especially for those who look for school to be their safe place, for the place where they can be fed. No, Lord God, we are so thankful that you are surrounding each and every child. And Lord, where there are needs, please bring them into our paths and we into theirs, that we can truly be your hands and feet in your community, in your world. This we pray through him who has taught us to pray together. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not to do the but deliver us from the
One, two, three, four. This time we can normally take up our highs and lows. Of course, it's fair covered, so we're trying to do that. Whenever we do have an offering plate, and that goes into the communion rail, and also in the back. So uh, we can put, uh, we can have an offering plate, and we can put the highs and lows and notes uh, when the service is over. This time, can you please join me in the highs and offering lesson? Above our God, we return to you the gifts of your giving. May this moment in our lives bear witness to the good news of Jesus.
Let us pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are yours. And you, Lord God, have promised yourself to us. Father, we pray now that the meditations of all of our hearts and the words of my mouth will bring glory and honor to you. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand for the reading of the gospel as you are able. Jesus saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, Huh, where can we buy bread to feed all of these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, Well, even if we work for months, we wouldn't be, have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. You know, there's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. <laughs> but what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell them to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same for the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
Moses had left politics, hatred, killing back in Egypt. He was pretty comfortable with his life as a shepherd. Sure, the sheep could give him some grief, but he had that shepherd's staff. He could handle that. He was in a very ordinary place for a shepherd. And yet, one thing we know is that the very ordinary becomes extraordinary in the hands of God. Moses, leave this burning bush, God says. Leave this burning bush. I just done this to get your attention. To break through the blindness you have created with your comfortableness. Those people, your people, back in Egypt, they're suffering horribly. There isn't a minimum wage. There's no OSHA. There's no Fair Employment Act. No labor unions. This can't go on. You go set them free. No way, Yahweh. <laughs> then what did Moses do? Right. He came up with every excuse in the book, except for maybe his dog ate his homework. I don't think he used that one. But God let him ramble on, and then finally God said, doesn't matter who you are. What matters is that I have called you, and I will be with you. Wow. You'd think that would make all the difference in the world. God's with Moses, so he'll go do whatever God wants him to do. God is with us, so we will go do whatever God wants us to do. Uh, hmm. There was another young man. Well, just a boy, really, a teenager. And his brothers were fighting in a war. And his dad asked him to take them some supplies. So he did, and as he drew near to his brothers, he heard the enemy really bad-mouthing his brothers and the troops. He made him angry. So angry that he decided to do something rash. He decided that he would go out in front of all the troops and try to tackle the giant of the enemy. He put on some armor that was given to him, and it just weighed him down. It, he, he couldn't use it. So God said, hey, what's in your hand? David was more willing than Moses to do something. What could a teenage boy do against a giant leader? How is it possible for him to make lemonade out of the lemons that he had been given? And now, let's consider a third young man. His name's Philip. He's traveling with Jesus. And as we heard in our scripture this morning, Jesus is teaching a huge field full of people. And that has become very ordinary. And we know that in the hands of God, the ordinary becomes extraordinary. So Jesus looks at Philip and he says, how are we going to feed these people, Philip? Philip, <clears throat> you can tell by the tenor of that scripture, is annoyed with this question. And probably with the man who's asking it. What do you mean, how can we feed them? We can't feed them. We can go work all of us for a month and we still aren't going to have money to feed them. Did you notice that whining? Every parent knows that 
sound, that slow, high-pitched complaint that grates on the grates on the eardrums and aggravates the soul. The tone of voice is difficult to bear, but the real irritation is the underlying cause: discontent and disobedience. God's children grumble and complain. From Adam to Eve, Moses to David, Philip to you and me. And how does God respond to those three men? To you? To me? God says, use the gifts I have given you. Use your creativity. Make lemonade out of life's lemons. To Moses, God says, Moses, what's in your hand? A rod, Moses says. My shepherd's staff. And yet, that staff becomes a symbol of power, extraordinary miracles. It is what brings water out of a rock. It is what is held aloft. So that victory happens. The rod becomes the sweet, refreshing lemonade, enough to feed all. And to David, God said, What's in your hand? And David says, A slingshot, some pebbles, and there's a giant. And God says, Slingshot, pebbles. And with the skill that I have given you, it is enough. It is enough. To Philip, Jesus says, what do you have? Five loaves, two fish. It may not seem like enough, but it is. In Jesus' hands, it's enough. To the people of Central United Methodist Church, Jesus says, feed my sheep. Make disciples of them all. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we say, but God, COVID, what are we supposed to do? People of Central United Methodist Church, what do you have in your hands? God has given each and every one of us gifts. Gifts to use in new and creative ways. The important thing is to give what we can. Whatever it is, it is enough in God's hands. Amen? sound convinced of that at all. God is in the business of miracles. Moses persuades a Pharaoh. David topples a giant. Philip feeds a multitude. Ah, uh, Moses didn't persuade the Pharaoh. David didn't topple the giant. Philip didn't feed the multitudes. But their actions in God's hands were enough to bring about miracles. And a horrible, horrible Friday gives way to a glorious Easter. In God's hands, it is enough. Matthew 28, be sure of this. I am with you even to the end of the age, says our God. Our God. So what is in your hands? Your phone. Call someone today. Just to check on them. Just to listen. Ask what they need. And if it's more than you can do, bring that need to this body of Christ. Together, we can help. 
Find creative ways to say, I care. The drive-by next week for 70 years of marriage. Wow! We can make that spectacular and so special. And what a way to say, I care. Buy a bag of groceries, leave it at someone's door. If you have a little extra cash, you can add that into the, the church's coffers and together, as we pool our money, what wonderful miracles can happen in God's hands. We are called on to make this cliche real. We have been given a bag of lemons in 2020, haven't we? And over the next two weeks, as we suspend our in-person services, let's find creative ways of being Jesus in each other's lives, in the lives of our family, in the lives of our neighbors, and our community. So the challenge is this. What is in your hand? Safely reach out and connect with people. Let them know you care. We care. What is in your hands? Whatever it is, it is enough. Let's stand.